E-bomb. Examples, ingredients, recipes. The core questions that we need to answer are, what does your audience need? What does your audience want? What does your audience buy? And because we're talking about e-bombs here, what do they read? What do they share? What do they trust? But when, even when you have a lot of answers to these questions, it doesn't tell you what to write exactly, what format to put it in, what stuff to include, what should it look like, what should you say. That is something that you learn both from experience, from subconsciously absorbing the qualities of good e-bombs, and also from analyzing them intentionally. So that's what we're gonna set you to doing right now. I'm going to show you a selection of e-bombs and you're gonna tell me if you see a pattern. Ready? Let's hit it. You've seen this e-bomb several times already in this class. The rest of the e-bomb goes on to explain why white rooms are popular and why they only really work in modern buildings and what kind of dark colors can work in a dim room. Next up, a video on how to store your electrical cords. If your extension cord looks like this, you're doing it the wrong way. I'm gonna show you how to roll it up like a contractor. Okay, so once you've untangled your extension cord, find both ends and plug them in. Now reach your hand through the loop and grab the cord, and pull it through, and continue the process until you get to the end. Take the last loop, run it through like this. Rolling up your extension cords this way makes them easy to hang, and it's gonna guarantee they never get tangled. Here's the best part. Unraveling them is easy. Simply undo your last knot there, and it just falls apart. This is an e-bomb from a 30 by 500 alumnus. This is a technical question that a newbie might ask and lots of examples including code here's another e-bomb from a 30 by 500 alum but there is one voice over environment that might just be the easiest and most accessible of all the inside of your car the inside of your car is great because it's small and it's full of materials that absorb sound and if there's too much background noise you can just drive somewhere else let's see how it compares to the other voiceover solutions we've covered so far cushion test check test one two iso booth Check test one, two, the inside of my car. The next time you need to record a voiceover, give it a shot. Here's an e-bomb from analytics company Kissmetrics. In case you're not familiar with the idea of the fold, it's a question of where do you place your actions such as sign up, free trial, etc., in terms of the size and shape of your web page. Here's another e-bomb from a 30 by 500 alum. This one's a twofer. It's a blog post about how to estimate your potential software as a service growth. And she made a spreadsheet to do the calculations for you. This cheat sheet is for my husband, Thomas. It's about how to retinify your website. Retina displays are Apple's high density displays on iPhones and some of their computers and regular graphics look pixelated and nasty on it. If you wanna know how to make that not happen, this cheat sheet is a place to start. This is the blog post that you'll find on alum Brennan Dunn's website addressing the question of doing free work for exposure. These are screenshots of individual pages from a free ebook that offers a bunch of recipes that require only five ingredients and 10 minutes to create. This video is actually a recording of a live webinar given by one of our alums, Josh Brown. You might notice that there's only 237 views of this video. Well, first of all, that's 237 more views than he would have if he didn't post this webinar online. Secondly, this video has only been online for two weeks, so that's really not bad. But most importantly, this guy, Eric Greenwald, is the first of several people to share this video with others. So the webinar happened, it was live, and Josh recorded it, and he posted it. And that actually brings us to discussion of results. I actually calculated the value of this particular e-bomb that I wrote back in 2012. This has been tweeted well over 96 times by now. Got me well over 60 newsletter signups. And given the price of our products and our conversion rates and whatnot, each sign up to our list is worth nearly $200. This e-bomb was very soon after I posted it worth quite a lot of money indeed. Frankly, I'm too busy making lessons for you guys to update these stats. <laughs> Believe me, they've gotten better since then. It was also back in 2012 that I talked to Brennan about the results from this podcast back when he was only on episode eight. 12 of the attendees of his new workshop mentioned the podcast as being a reason that they signed up. In other words, this podcast got him somewhere in the order of $12,000 of revenue back when it was new. This email from alum Brandon Savage, who doesn't have a huge list, who isn't super internet famous, well, this email helped him sell $2,000 worth of his workshop. This seemingly boring video about how to roll up your extension cords has 487,000 views. Let me repeat that. 
487,644 views. Now this video is created by build.com. They sell building materials. This is an e-bomb for sure. This cheat sheet my husband made that turned into a promotional tool for his book. It's been downloaded over 100,000 times. This little ebook with all these super fast, simple, and delicious recipes, when the lady dropped this e-bomb, she was relatively unknown. And today, she has over 64,000 subscribers. Is it all directly attributable to this one little free ebook? I'm sure it's not. Is a large part of it due to this free ebook, which I saw circulating everywhere? I think so. So by now you've certainly noticed some patterns in these e-bombs. The key pattern, of course, is that they're all educational. E-bomb is short for educational content marketing because regular old content marketing just has the idea that any old thing that gets eyeballs is good enough. We don't think that that's the case. Educational content marketing is so much more powerful, but it's a lot of words, so e-bomb it is. So if you remember the example that we use to introduce e-bombs, it's this one. My room is dark, what color should I paint it, essentially? I asked the internet and then I ended up here. And that is key to the process. That is key to a very powerful type of e-bomb. An e-bomb that answers a question. And note too, that this e-bomb doesn't simply say, white is not good. I already knew that. If she just said, use a dark color, I don't know that I would have believed it. But because this quote that she starts off with, is so compelling and sounds so much like what I want, then I believed this e-bomb and I kept reading and I eventually tried the advice. And the supporting details here in these words are proof that she and this guy she's quoting understand my problem. A light color will never come to life in a dark room, but a rich, deep color can make a dim, somber space, which is what I had, feel warm and luminous, which is what I want, even though it receives no natural light. My living room gets some natural light, but very little. This is proof to me on an emotional level that this person understands my problem. So question and proof. Does the pattern hold up? Why yes, yes it does. What if your Rails app couldn't tell who was visiting it? And here's some proof, some supporting detail. Maybe it's a user ID or a preferred language or whether they always wanna see the desktop version of your site on their iPad. These are all things that users want your site to remember. It doesn't just say, here's sessions, here's how to use them. Justin goes and he provides this proof that he understands the reader's problems. Should you ever work for free? Question, most would say no, but does it ever make sense to do stuff without pay? More question, more proof that Brennan understands the problem because he knows what clients and other people often will say to you when they're telling you you should work for them for free. This will be huge for your portfolio. If this works out, it'll lead to a lot of paid work from us. I personally have heard all these phrases repeatedly throughout my consulting career. This is the recipe for the simplest e-bomb. And it may be the simplest, but don't let that fool you. It is extremely powerful to simply take a problem someone has, take a question that they have, which is a type of pain, get really specific, prove that you understand their very specific scenario and then help them with it. And so this is the recipe that you'll be using to start dropping your very first e-bombs. Start with a question, a specific question, not what color should I paint my house, but a light color can never come to light in a dark room. Provide detail, provide proof that you understand. Quotes are great too. Then give an answer, just one answer. Don't write a book, take those specific proof details and provide an answer that makes sense with those. And then add your simple template call to action. Don't miss my next post. Drop your email in the box below and get it straight in your inbox. It really is that easy and you're about to start doing it. But maybe you have a question and maybe your question is, but Amy, I'm not internet famous. I don't have a list. Nobody knows who I am. Nobody reads my blog. I've got like five Twitter followers. Will this really work for me? It doesn't seem like it should because it's really easy for you to say, and by you, I'm, I mean me, Amy, it's easy for me to say, look at all the followers I have. Look at how big my list is. Well, here's your question and here's your supporting detail that proves that I understand your problems, right? It really works. And to address the actual question, nobody starts off quote unquote famous. Everyone starts from nothing. 
everyone in our industries anyway, unless you're going to put out a sex tape. The thing is, also, fame isn't nearly as valuable as you think it is. Fame without trust is worthless. Fame without relevance to your audience is worthless. If your audience knows who you are, but doesn't eagerly look for your advice, then there's no way that you're going to be able to sell them anything. Therefore, you don't need to be famous to help people, to get started helping people, to build that trust, to start showing up all over various corners of the internet like Maria Killam did. Maria Killam's not famous. She's known and respected in tiny, tiny circles, but those are clearly big enough for her to run her business. And that's what you should be aiming at. You're not looking to be a Kanye, you're looking to be a Maria Killam or an Amy Hoy or an Alex Hillman or a Brennan Dunn. And the way that you do that is by dropping e-bombs, which of course is naturally what you're about to start doing right now. 